All right. So it is time now to begin. And so I shall. Um, if you're wondering why I have kept my camera off, it's mainly because I've been working on the Discord bot all morning. So, yeah. So, uh, some announcements, I guess, maybe. Um, so, yeah, office hours are back online. Um, what else is um, true about the world? Project 1 is due today. Uh, homework 6 and Project 2 are out. Um, I hope Project 2 is shorter and easier. Um, because Project 1, you know, if I can confess, uh, Project 1 was too long. But the good news is, uh, and then the truth of it, you know, here's the truth, uh, it doesn't matter. So, so, but uh, the new plan, uh, make projects fit short. So, that's kind of, that's like the moral of life. Now we know everything. Um, okay. I think that's basically all the announcements that I have for today. I think we can get right into classes, which I want to do. So, so what are classes? So basically, I guess we can talk about objects, but I'm not going to talk. Let's let's talk about classes. So a class is a is a structure. Now, of course, I'm not going to define that um, in Python, which can both have variables and methods, also known as functions. So in a language like Java, uh, you basically call things methods. Um, in like C++, you tend to call them functions, uh, sometimes methods if they're inside of a class. Um, but the point is that I honestly use the term method and function interchangeably. I really, to me, I am not concerned about that distinction. So let's, can I increase the font size? I already increased the font size. It's already at 24. And I guess I can increase it more. Uh, 30. So, okay. So, basically, uh, you know, what does it mean to have uh, variables inside of a class? And what does it mean to have methods. And so let me show you the basic definition of a class. Um, let's call it a person class. Or is that is that from the homework? No, I forget. Yeah, I think that's from the homework. Let's make something that's not from the homework. Um, let's make a class about uh, maybe something topical. It's a voter class. Okay. So it's kind of a person. Voters are sort of people. Um, but anyway, so, so this is how you declare a class, right? So in order to declare a class, um, uh, you type class and then the class name and then a colon, right? And then everything gets 
one more indent. So now pass will allow you to, so let me talk about pass for just a minute or two again. So remember what pass is. Um, yeah, let's put it here. Um, pass is a no op, which I mean by which I mean it's a uh, it's a piece of code keyword really that does nothing. And in most languages, like C doesn't really have a no op. Java doesn't really have a no op. But um, hmm. Uh, but here's the thing. Well, I haven't gotten to that. You know, just that's a that's a. Well, de okay. So definitely not in main. Uh, probably above fun other functions. Uh, below constants seems about right. So. <clears throat> so why do we have um, pass in Python then? And the answer is that sometimes, uh, because Python relies on tab level, um, code needs something to tell it that the tab level is valid. And that's it. So that's why like, if you do an if, you know, uh, like if x is equal to two and then say if x is equal to two we pass the thing is that like right now this code doesn't really do anything it evaluates if x is equal to two and then it passes which just doesn't do anything but if you don't have this piece of code then you see that you're going to get this little red underline that says like indent expected right and even though there is or there was i should i should say there like was an indent here the problem is that because there's no code here python doesn't understand this so basically here in order to put pass here it it allows you to not write code that instant, but also have a statement like if or for or while that requires you to tab to the next level. Um, okay. All right, so uh, so that's that's pass, and let me just put pass up here because it's a different thing. So okay, now let me talk about first. Let me talk about adding a um, a function to a class. So you know, so here's how to add a function. So let me explain what what you want to do. So you want to go def just like regular, just like you're making a function. And then, like, what does a voter do? A voter, uh, you know, get polling location, say, and now you see my use of pass, maybe def get voter information, and then maybe uh, cast ballot, maybe? Something like that. So these are, like, the types of things that um, ah, yeah, register. So, okay. So here's some functions. Now, the first question you should ask is not, what is a voter? Or, have you done your civic duty? which I have, uh, we, you know, I, I am an old believer in, in the, the virtue of civic duty, so I guess I, I did vote. Um, but anyway, now that that little bit of unfortunate business is out of the way, we can talk about, um, well, I don't want to, well, we'll talk about constructors in just a second. So let me talk about what this self is. So basically the first parameter in any function in Python, um, I should say the method, or even perhaps um, in a class, is self. 
Now you can change the name of self. You can say definitely not self, but generally it's traditional just to call it self. And so what is self? But so self is a reference to the class that you're in. So let me show you what I mean by that. So let me create two voters. Let's say voter um, V is equal to, or let's say Eric equals voter. And then let's create, um, who's here? Michal. Right, so that we're two voters, right? And so in order to create a class, uh, this is how to create a class. Maybe you want to put this in the uh, if name equals main block or something. If that's you know if that's your thing, if that's your style. Um, and so what you want to do here, and so now what we do is we can call functions. So let me show you. I'm going to say Eric dot register, right? And then maybe I call dot register, and then maybe cast like uh, I don't know um, Eric dot get voter info right so well so here's the thing and let me show you um, um, I don't really know well so okay anyway if I run this nothing's gonna happen because you see that I haven't so let's just see what happens here so you see nothing happened but that's only because we haven't implemented any of these things so let me implement one extra function and so this is this is some secret stuff now. So okay, so let's let's make a name location um, maybe voter ID number or something. And so let me talk about how to create variables inside of a class and so if you want to create a variable inside of a class the way to do it is to declare it but you have to declare it as self dot that variable name so so just watch what I'm doing here okay so now that I've done this what I've done is basically these are some variables that get passed into the function so here what we need to do is let's just say Eric, uh, my location is one two three Voter Avenue, and um, and what is the voter ID number? Um, I am voter ID number seventeen twenty nine, right? And Michal is Michal. She lives at seven er, seven seven seven, you know, sevens Lane. Um, and her voter ID number is uh, 3309. Okay, so now what we can do, so you see here what we're calling is voter, right? So we call voter with some data in it, but what Python does is calls in it. And so remember that there are two underscores before and after, right? So this is what is called a constructor. So this is this is what's called the class constructor for a voter. And so basically what this allows you to do now is to say something like, um, so once we do this, now we can say, uh, maybe return here we'll return uh, self dot location um, maybe here uh, maybe we'll do a self dot register equals false right 
So what, what does register do? Maybe register will set self.register uh, is equal to true. Uh, casting a ballot, you know, for a candidate. So we'll see what that does. I haven't implemented that yet. I kind of have no idea what that, well, actually what that would do, okay, let me show you what that would do. If we defined So uh, apparently, let's see, it doesn't like it. Function name should be lowercase, method voter should, could be static. I don't care about any of that. So basically let's, let's print out calling the voter constructor. So you see here that it called the voter constructor, right? And here we'll print out, you know, get voter info. Uh, these should these don't return anything, so it doesn't matter. Um, so basically here, oh, get voter info. Oh, well, we don't return anything. So um, Let's, let's return something from this function so that we'll know um, self.location, self.voter um, ID number. And, and then maybe we'll output is registered. So uh, self.registered. OK. So, and then we'll print out, yeah, okay, so we'll do that. So now let's watch what happens. So here, this will print out all my voter information. And, but what if, so you notice that it didn't call this one, right? So it didn't call this function. So why did it call this one and not this one? And let me show you why. So in order to call the other one, what you actually need to do is you would have to go McCall.voter. And you see now it's saying, oh, now we're calling this function, right? So you can't just have this be out in the middle of nowhere. Like if you just call this, then it Python knows that this is a class. And so because Python knows that it's a class, it looks for the init method of that class. And then it calls the init method with that data. And then it returns to you the class um, reference, like a basically the variable to the class. So that's what it does. What if init was not there? So um, so if we have a class, uh, let's call it ballot, and um, I don't know, def, uh, definitely not in, uh, let's see. What, what other things does, do ballots do? Um, I guess you count ballots or something. Um, uh, I am a ballot being counted. So let's create a ballot. Okay, so let's call B is equal to ballot. And so here's the thing. Is this going to work or is it going to fail? And you see that it's going to work because B dot counts or whatever. And you see that here it says, I'm a ballot being counted, right? And so there was no init method. And so your question should be like, what is it doing? The answer is there is a secret init method that basically goes like this. Okay. So 
there is an init method even if you don't write it. So the constructor of the class does exist even if you don't write it, but it's basically just this. And so if you write it, then it gets overwritten. This, this basically null do nothing function gets overwritten with that whatever code you have. So in general, you should declare all your variables, right? Declare all of the variables you're going to use in the constructor. Yeah, it's it, min's right. It's not precisely a keyword, um, but you notice that Python does color it, and the reason why they color it is because it is it's almost a keyword. Uh, so, no, you can't. Um, you can have default arguments. So what I could always do, for instance, is let's say that I wanted to do registered. And say I wanted registered to by default be false, but we could always change it to true. And the other thing to keep in mind is that self.name is not name, right? Name is a local variable that exists inside this class constructor method, function, whatever, right? It, so, but self.name is a class, it's a basically, well, what I call an instance variable. Basically because it each class gets its own self.name, right? So it's not shared. So self.name is not shared among different uh, voter classes. But self.name, um, you know, self.name exists for all of them. So, well, I guess that's, I kind of already said that. So, okay. Um, but you can do something like this where you have, say, registered equals false. And then here, let's say that we want to set a call to register to be true. So you see now that there's different parameters in both of these constructors like this, right? So let's print out. See, she's registered. Well, actually, I should, I should, um, I should not register. That way, it'll be. See, I didn't register, but she did. Well, yeah, whatever, whatever name you put in here, even if it's not self, it will basically be the thing that is counted as self, which is why you should always really type self. Um, it is, it would be very weird in Python to find um, someone who's not adhering to that. And even though I'm not a big fan of like really strict coding standards like that, this is one that if you don't do it this way, you're going to confuse yourself and everybody else who ever looks at your code. Okay, so, um, hmm. so what else can voters do? Voters can cast ballots. So I guess a ballot, the init method should take a candidate, and then we'll have uh, self.candidate equals candidate, self.counted maybe equals candidate false and so I'm a ballot being counted and then we'll say self.counted equals true right so okay so then here what we can do is maybe here we can create um, B is equal to ballot uh, of candidate and then b dot count, right? I mean, of course, most of this does nothing, but you kind of understand what the purpose is of all of this, right? So maybe we'll have a self dot ballot ballots equals list, and then we will just like I don't know something like that, right? We can throw ballots into the list that way. Why doesn't it like b? Oh, shadow's name B from outer scope. Who cares? Um, 
Howie Hawkins. Okay. So, right, so here, uh, let's get rid of this, um, this voter function thing here, and then let's actually get rid of it up in the code too. Let's get rid of this. Okay, so that's basically how classes are created, right? So you have classes that, you see that they can have variables, they can have functions, and that's really their purpose. And you see that, like, uh, basically everything in Python is secretly some kind of class, because if I make something like a string, um, say that's equal to hello, and then you go a string dot, and you see all this autocomplete stuff, right? Like, what is this? And the answer is that somewhere there is a class str. And of course, doing this is very bad because it's, it's like, should not do that. But, and basically, there's a function called ends with and, you know, other string. And there's a function like, you know, there's a function called strip. And there's a function called split. And there's a function called lower, right? Etc. So, so that's kind of, so we know that basically everything in Python, whenever you can do a string or a, whoops, <laughs> whenever you can do anything dot something, and here you see that nothing is really coming up because if, if, and like this is not, this is not, you know, um, these are just literally keywords. So currently anything is undefined, but if we just say int is, uh, anything is over three and then we do anything dot, you see that even int is kind of a class. Here are its methods, right? Has a bunch of different methods. So basically everything in Python is sort of a class. Um, yeah, so in terms of the coding standards for class names, um, <clears throat> generally uh, class names should be like upper, upper camel case, right? So what I mean by that is that um, if you create a class like, for instance, like royal game, and then I, I didn't capitalize the of, I just made it royal game of er. And, uh, or for instance, like er piece, uh, board, square. Um, these are all the, the class names. What are all the name functions called? Um, uh, those, so functions that have like under, under, like two underscores, generally they are functions that you shouldn't be calling explicitly. A lot of times they're kind of operators and stuff like that. So, um, so name, this is just a variable, right? But in it, basically anything like this, um, what should I say about this? I, I, there's there's a limited amount I want to say. I don't want to say too much because if I say it, then uh, huh? Weird. Okay. Yeah, I mean, I so a lot of times they're overloaded operators. I'll just say the word, and then I'm not going to say any more about it. Okay, so let's create some new classes. So what are some new things that we could talk about? So voting is voting is done. Um, so but the idea, so let me talk about like the idea, right? Oh sure, that's a good idea. Class movie. Right? And um, <clears throat> so So we want to construct a movie. Maybe a movie has a, uh, a title. Maybe maybe that's all we need, like a director. 
maybe we can set yeah let's uh, and um, like runtime in seconds okay so we'll have self dot title equals title self dot director whoops didn't auto complete equals director self dot runtime There we go. And I put a period at the end of that because that's how you. So, oh yeah, rating, ratings. Okay, yeah, we can do that too. Self dot rating. <clears throat> so, let's talk about, for instance, let's make a little program. Uh, let's call let's steal this and call this voter test and so then it won't run anymore so now let's create a little program called that that messes with movies so let me show you another example of these underscore things so wrapper is supposed to return a string representing the class so let me show you what it's kind of traditional to do. You can return something like this. Um, oh yeah, so you can put two empty lines, but it's it's Unfortunately, in classes, it's a one empty line tradition between methods. You can do two. I I really don't care. Uh, PyCharm cares. Uh, it'll yell at me, right? Like if I put an extra line in here, it'll be like, no, no, don't do that. And then if I hit like auto format, it'll take that line away. Um. So self dot, let's say here. Whoops, that didn't work. Help me, help me. Oh, it really didn't. Doesn't want to do it. Okay. Okay. Maybe it'll do it now. There we go. So. Um, sure. Let's say well name. Yeah. So let's say uh, input. Enter movie info. Movie info. And we'll do dot split. And so what we can do is we can say. Um, name is equal to movie info zero and of course we need to make sure that um, if len info, uh, split. do is we can say list of movies dot pen movie name director runtime uh, rating that's a good way this is better much better and then we can ask for it again and then at the very end we're gonna go for movie in list of movies print movie 
and you'll see what happens. Okay, so here we go. Uh, enter movie info. So we need name director runtime rating. So matrix uh, runtime. What's the runtime on the matrix? I think it's like who knows. There we go. And the rating was, I think it wasn't the rating like PG-13. It wasn't R. Oh. Ah. <laughs> there we go. Oh, okay. Try it again. Okay, what's another movie? Um, the Fifth Element. And of course I can't, uh, Luke Besson is the director. I forget the runtime. One, two, three, and eh, PG-13. It might have even just been PG, eh, whatever. Um, Shawshank Redemption, right? Um, oh, I need an underscore there. Oops. I forget who directed it, so I'm just going to say Andy Dufresne. Uh, and let's call it R. Hopefully that didn't blow up. Okay. Uh, Spy Kids 3? Wow. No idea who directed that. Ran for three minutes, I'm sure, and it was rated Q. Um, E.T. That's a Spielberg, right? And uh, it was probably rated PG, I would think. Uh, Shrek. Hmm. Okay. All right. So now we're done. And so what you see here is that when you call um, when you call the print on movie, right? Now normally if you just printed a class without any of the, without that wrapper function, um, the class wouldn't really know what to do, and it would actually just print out. Uh, let me show you what it does actually print out if we don't have the wrapper function. So let me just take this out and uh, show you what this thing does if we don't have it. Um, oh, <laughs> that's unfortunate. Um, I'm just going to cut it. Oh no, you know what we can do? There we go. That's best. Ah, they are mixed up. They are mixed up. Oh, because here I was putting in rating last. Okay. So let's enter some movie info. Um, a, B, 3, and D. There we go. And then we're done. So generally, what the, this is what the thing is going to do. So, OK. You see that it just returns this main.movie object at blah blah blah, which is some memory location, right? So, but the, the whole point of that is that 
when you look at this thing, this doesn't really tell you anything, right? This is just basically saying that it was an object that doesn't have any way to print it. Like it doesn't understand how to print itself. So it's just an object with, um, with that kind of, with, you know, at some memory location. So this is all it, eh. Yep, and so this is basically all it tells you. So, but now if you put wrapper back in, so if we change it from not wrapper to wrapper, which stands for a representation, basically it just means like a string representation of a class. Then you can say a b one d, uh, a a b b two c, done, and now you see that it'll work. So all right. Yeah, I mean they are definitely the best movies. So but the point is that like um here you kind of see that um hmm I don't know what other kinds of things do you do with movies or so we've talked about these kinds of variables. Um, let me talk about class variables just a little bit. I don't want to, maybe I'll talk about them in the future, but I will talk about them just so that you know what they are. So for instance, you can create something that's, it's kind of like a constant. Um, so So let me declare a variable here. Okay. Well, actually, let me let me do it in another class because I don't want to I don't want to keep doing all this movie stuff. Um, let's do something else. So now let's create a new class, class, random class, and so what this is going to do, it'll have an init, and then we'll have a self dot. Uh, self.x is equal to x, and so let's add an x here. And then here we'll have a y is equal to, say, 3. And now I think, if I remember correctly, so, so random class 5. And then, so a is equal to random class 5, b is equal to random class, say, 17. So, OK. So if we if we look at for instance um, a dot x and b dot x and then a dot y and b dot y, what are we going to see? Let's see what we see. So in this case, it's all the same. And, but if I change a dot y equal to say five. then it changes like this, but, so this is one, so if it's, if it's immutable, this kinda works, but it's not great to do this. Okay, so, and I'll show you why in just a second. <clears throat> if I make y a list instead, <clears throat> and instead here I just do a dot, a dot y dot append five, so this is now a mutable object. I want you to watch what happens to uh, a dot x, b dot x, a dot y, b dot y. So remember, a dot x is five, b dot x is seventeen, a dot y is technically should be equal to a list containing the number five, and b dot y. If everything works the way that you might expect, b dot y should just be an empty list, right? But here we go. Huh. 
Like, what's going on there? Right? So, so what happened? I, I just don't, under, I mean, I'm seeing your question. I just don't understand it. Can we, can we do something else in rougher? So do, oh, I guess you could. Yeah, I mean, sure. Um, but Rupper expects to basically pass through and return a string without any like user input or anything. It'd be weird if you called print and then print had you input a bunch of stuff. Okay, so, all right, so what happened here? Sorry, I was looking at a bunch of other stuff at the moment. Um, so what happened here? The answer is that, um, uh, so not for part four, um, for project two, sure. So the thing is that I suggest I suggest that you actually use these um, these class variables as as a kind of constant. So generally, don't do this. It's but this is something you can do. You can make something like so. This you can do. And the reason why I say that this is better is because then you won't run into any problems with mutability. Basically, immutable, so it's really complex. So immutable class variables, and that's what these things are called, uh, they can change per class. But mutable, so like lists, dictionaries, other classes, stuff like that are the same shared variable and if you change one you change all of them in all of the random class so so you can do it inside so you're fine if you create self dot my list here, right? This is this is totally okay, and so this is called um, an instance variable uh, instead of a class variable. So a class variable is shared, right? Class variables are shared among all of the the random classes. Instance variables are created new for each class, and so that's this is uh, we generally think about things as instance variables, not class variables. There's some exceptions, like in C++, um, you can declare uh, a class variable as static, and that'll that'll give you basically the same thing as a class variable in Python basically the same idea but the problem is that um, basically the problem is just that it's very easy to declare a variable out here right it's very easy to do this and my suggestion to you is don't do this if you can avoid it unless you're putting constants in I think constants are fine um, and then if you ever need a class variable so if you're inside of a class and you need to refer to even a class variable you still have to go, um, right? So for instance, if we do this, we see that <clears throat> you still need a self dot in front of it to get at it. Um, and that's how you get at class variables. So yeah, my, so I'm really only teaching this to basically tell you how to avoid doing it 
um, until there's so in terms of the white starts stuff um, hmm yeah so you'll have to modify that you'll have to modify that uh, in the in the white starts and white ends and black starts and black ends for the um, for the uh, part five in the homework and for the project you'll have to decide what you want to call them and um, Um, yeah, okay. Yeah, exactly. So, so that's one way of thinking about classes. Classes are definitely, um, classes are like, uh, you can call them blueprints or basically another way to think of them are like, um, they're like a little device, right? It's like a little device that remembers a few things and can do a few things. And so that's that's the kind of idea in a class. It's like it's like a little subcomputer that just has its own little um Yep. Okay. So, let's see. I think that's all I really want to say about classes for now. I think maybe I want to talk a little bit more about recursion. So at this point, I think I'm going to break away and talk about recursion for 20 minutes. Uh, there is a destructor. I think the destructor, if I'm not mistaken, let's see. That's a destructor. But so. Let me, okay, so before I go on, let me tell you the kinds of things that you actually need to know. So, basically, how to declare a class, how to use self to get variables and other functions inside a class, how to create variables in a constructor, um, also basically how to write a constructor using basically um, what else do you need and then just how to declare uh, how to basically access and use a class so basically my class dot do something right and so that's that's what you need to know these things so if you're thinking, do I need, you know, do I need to know wrapper? No. Do I need to know destructors? No. Do I need to know inheritance? No. Do I need to know uh, overloading operators? No. Do I need to know static method and class method? Well, I mean, setters and getters are definitely how to write, you know, uh, right? How to write functions. Setters and getters are part of that. So, basically, like, there's a whole bunch of extra stuff in, in object orientation. There's a whole bunch of extra stuff. In classes, there's a whole bunch of extra stuff in general, and you might think, well, that's a lot of stuff. Why aren't you teaching us all that stuff? The answer is because, in general, um, if I did, then everybody would be very confused and no one would be able to finish the homework. So, and I think it's good just to see the basics of classes because the things, this stuff, let me also say, like, in the real world, right? or in the real programming world, as much as there is one, um, it seems like 
99.99% of the stuff is the stuff I teach. 0, 0, 0, 0, zero you know, 0.001% of the stuff is the stuff I don't teach. Also, uh, this is all, all the things that I've talked about there, except for stack method, class method, because that's not Python and not C++. Basically everything else is covered uh, in 202. So, so I'm not asking you to learn everything, but also if you, if you do learn the stuff that I've taught you about classes today, then the moral of the story is that actually in, in a pro kind of professional setting in like the rest of your life, how many times are you writing destructors? Actually, very rarely. How many times are you using inheritance? Uh, no, I mean, setters and getters, we've already written setters and getters. So, like for instance, if I set, you know, def uh, get director, and we just return self.director, um, right? So, uh, this is a getter. And so a setter is the same thing. Say you accidentally put in the wrong director, you would say self.director equals new director, and that's it. So in Python, you don't really need setters and getters as much, and the reason why is because the actual underlying variables are directly exposed. So for instance, you can always just do like a movie class dot director and just set it equal to something. So so a lot of the times, so in Python, you're probably not even gonna write a lot of setters and getters, probably not many setters and getters uh, in Python or not nearly as much as other languages. Um, the weird thing, so Python has a weird fact about it, is that unlike other languages, if you if you know anything about Java or C++ or whatever, um, the, uh, what you call it? There is no, there's not really public pri uh, protected private in Python. So setters and getters, are they required for the class? Well, I don't want to say yes or no to that because like you see what they are, right? They're like one line functions. So they're not complex. The only thing that I could say is that they're not you generally won't need them a lot, but if you ever want to implement a setter, you're for perfectly legal to implement. Like, you know, since I say that you're allowed to implement essentially any function in a class, you're definitely allowed to implement setters and getters since they are one-line functions in, in a class. Um, okay. Uh, no. Okay, so there is, I mean, as with everything, I should basically put like 18,000 asterisks on, on the there's not really public protected private in Python. There is actually a way that you can make variables seem private in Python, but they are not actually, and you can still access them. So I want to spend the last 15 minutes talking about recursion again. So let me talk about recursion. <clears throat> so there's basically some some examples of recursion that I kind of want to go over. So the first example of recursion that I'm going to do is an example with strings, I think. Let, let's come up with a good string example. Um, let's just have count A's uh, recursively, right? So now this is like the stupidest function to actually try to do recursively, um, but whatever. It, it's a good example of how this type of stuff works. So <clears throat> I 
Okay. So there we go. We'll print that. Uh, yep. And so here, what we're going to do is once we input it, we'll count them. So how do we count A's? So this is the way to think about it recursively. So if you look at, I'm going to delete all this documentation and just look at the first character. Is it an A? Or A, I guess, technically. If it is, we want to add one to the count. If not, go past. So basically, what does that mean, right? So that's if a string, well, so if a string, uh, let's say if not a string, so if a string is a, um, what you call it, either null string or it's either none object or empty string, uh, we can return zero, right? Because there's no a's in the none object and there's no a's in an empty string. Okay, this is our base case. So now we have to do the inductive case, which is basically else. Um, so L if a string zero, uh, I'll just do dot lower is equal to a. And if that's true, then what we want to do is we want to say return one plus uh, count a's recursively. Okay, and so then what we can do here is we can slice off the rest of the string. So we can take from one till the end of the string. And then if the thing is not an A, we don't add one. So let me just show you how this works. Uh, let's debug this. So let's see here, console, uh, yep, oh crap, let's step out of this. All right, self.buffer, tell me a string. The string is going to be a, a, b, b, a, 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 b, 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 a, 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 okay. Oh, does it look familiar? Well, repetition is the mother of all mothers, I guess. So, okay. Uh, we don't want to be in here. We don't want to be in here. We want to be in here. Let's see if we can do that. Um, okay, let's try to step out, step out, step out. Wait, whoops. <laughs> ah, almost. So, step over. Yes. Ah, I'll tell you what, let's put the, the breakpoint uh, here and try it again. Okay, didn't work. Breakpoint here and try again. There we go. Okay. So now what is it going to do? It says that the string is AABB, AABB, blah, 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 right? So then what is this going to do is the thing. So you see here, it's going to strip off the string, and it's going to call the function again. And now, we notice here there's there's an a missing now, right? So here, the whole string is being looked at, and we're adding one to whatever you get. And then here, uh, we do that again. Yep, here we go. And then here we do that again. But now it's not an A, so it's going to go to return count as rec. But then here you see it's going to strip off one till the end. But you see that it's actually going to strip off a non A. It's going to strip off a B this time. So, okay, then it's going to strip off another B, right? And now we're back to three A's. So it should return one, two, three. And then it's going to return what? Some non A's, so three B's. One, two, three. And then it's going to return, I guess, a whole bunch of A's, right? And 
And then here we have BBBB or BBB. And then the last one is, oh, now we're at empty string. So basically, if we look in the recursion stack, what we're going to see here is we have every single string represented all the way down to nothing. And I'm looking right here, by the way. It's, I know it's small. I can't seem to change the debug console, blah, 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 font size. Or maybe I can, but I just haven't. And so at this point, what it's going to do is now we have an empty string. So now it's going to return 0. And so when it returns 0, what is it going to do? Is it going to just end? No, right? It's going to go back to the previous one where we had just an A, and now it returns 0, so now we have 1 plus 0. So now we're going to get 1. And then here we have the three Bs, right? So we're going to put 0 plus, 0 plus, 0 plus. And then here we're going to do a 1 plus, so that's going to give us 2, 3, 4, Right, this is on the way back out of the recursion. So I trace the recursion back in, and now we're tracing the recursion out. And so what you see is that eventually these things are going to start disappearing. So let me show you what, what happens. So uh, as this happens, we're going to lose. So you see here now things are being popped off the recursion stack. And what that means is that um, as you do this, the string kind of gets longer and longer again because you're returning to a function before you cut it off. And so uh, here it's returning the one plus because it's an A. And now here, I guess it's not an A because the first thing is a B, so it's returning a zero plus, and then zero plus, and then zero plus, right? So there should have been three Bs and there are. And then here we go one plus, and then we get one plus, one plus, one plus, oh. There we go. And then finally, it returns and it tells us 12. So, so basically this is how this kind of recursive function works. And the reason why I'm going through this kind of recursive function is because it is very much like the homework problems that you have to do. So it's not exactly the homework problems, but it is very similar. So it's it's gonna be a kind of um, if you look at this code and you work through this code and you debug this code yourself then you can kind of think about it this way let's do another one that's also similar to homework problems so let's have a string that's more a's than b's and so what I mean by that is that at every stage what you need is so if you do an a and a b that's okay because there's more a's than b's as you read through but if you do a b b then there's one a and then there's two b's so this would be no good here's an example of some good ones maybe a a a a a a b right or a, a just all a's or a b a b a b a b right there's always more a's as you read through it than there are b's right as you scan from left to right and you count like the number of a's and the number of b's there's always more a's than b's when you count so let us devise a function i'm going to show you a function that is going to tell us if there's more a's than b's and so let's think about it this way so if not a string so we need our base case we're going to return true and we're just going to call the empty string it's good okay if the empty string wasn't good then you'd have to do a bunch of extra base cases um, and who cares about the empty string right are there more a's than b's in the empty string you would say yeah I, I guess so or or at least as many right I guess at least as many right uh, as any <laughs> This is this is as and this is as. So okay, but what if there is something in the string? So if um, and let's say I'm gonna I'm gonna declare a variable called diff equals zero. So now if diff is bigger than zero and uh, a string, well actually sure, 
if a string zero is dot lower, well, really, who cares? But we'll just do it this way: is equal to a. Uh, then what? Then what we're going to do is we're, we're going to return and at least as many a's, and that's why long function names are okay when you have autocomplete. Um, so let me show you how I'm doing this. So basically, differ, difference is going to start. So diff is actually a, a shorthand for difference. And so, and then here I'm going to say elif a string zero uh, dot lower is equal to b. Then I'm going to return um, at least as many blah 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 minus one. And we're going to pretend like the string is all a's and b's. So. Um, but what could actually happen here is the way that we know that there's more a's than b's is that if this difference ever goes negative, so if difference uh, minus one is less than zero, then just return false, right? Else return this. So that's kind of the way to think about it here. So if the difference ever, ever becomes false, you don't have to keep searching. You know that we've reached a point. Um, so I'll print it out just because I want you to see it, but you know, you don't you probably shouldn't be printing stuff out in the recursion like that. So okay, let's run this thing. Let's just straight up run it. Let's not debug it. Because we're almost done here. So A A B. True. And that's good. B A. That should be false. Nice. A B A. That should be true. A A A A A A B. True. A, you know, A, B, A, B, A, B, A, B, also true. But now let's do something that's more interesting. So A, A, B, 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 A, B, B, A, A. So here, you see that the number of A's is equal to the number of B's, but if you actually count them from left to right, you would have two, right? So the difference would be two, and then it would be one again, then it would be zero again, which is okay, right? It's okay to get to zero, but then this B causes it to be negative one, and so Hopefully it's going to print out this uh, BABA, right? And it does. And that's where it failed, right? So th the reason why I'm printing this out is because it's telling us where it fails. And so if you, if you do something like, you know, A, A, B, A, A, B, A, A, B, 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 right? So eventually this is going to fail because we have a ton of Bs here that's definitely going to outnumber the As. But it's going to go for a while because it's going to say, well, the difference is, uh, 0 and then 1, 2, and then back down to 1 because there's a B. Uh, 2, 3, down to 2 again. 3, 4, and then I think 4, 3, 2, 1 maybe. So we might just get uh, 8 or 9 Bs or something like that. Yeah, something like that. So that is the idea here. Okay. So this is just a kind of. Um, little extra hint, okay? Because uh, recursion is very difficult and I don't want you to be totally uh, unprepared for it. So I'm just giving you a bunch of different examples. Now these aren't the homework problems, but they're kind of very, 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 very close to the homework problems. Um, oh, why does it break if diff goes negative? Because uh, we want only more A's than B's as we read. So if diff is negative, then that means there were more b's than a's in the first part of the string. I mean, there's no fundamental rule of the universe that says if diff goes negative, you have to do something or not. It's just this function wants there to be as many a's as b's in every reading as you go through. So that's why this is the way it is. Okay. So I gotta head out because I gotta go and debug the other two Discord bots for 341 and 202. So I'm gonna go do that. Um, all right. I think, uh, yeah, that would definitely get false, right? Because even though there's a ton of A's, it goes one and then zero again, and then here it's gonna be negative one. And it doesn't matter, it doesn't care that there's all these A's afterwards because here we've reached a string where there's more uh, B's than A's. Anyway, the, the, the point of this problem is not that like this particular A's than B's problem is like interesting or in any way 
um, useful. It's just, I mean, I, I shouldn't say that it's useless. It is ac there are a lot of good things about this this problem, but it is. Um, I feel like it's a good piece of code that you can kind of read over and think about, and then you can debug it and. Uh, Exactly, so that's true. Hmm, I don't know that one. Okay, so I'm going to let everybody go now, because it's five minutes after class anyway, and I will uh, talk to everybody later. Good luck.